Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at geometric problems with vectors, specifically three-dimensional vectors, so we can answer questions from exercise 12c. So in this case here we've got um, a quadrilateral of some kind, A, B, C, D are the points of this. Uh, and we've got a couple of questions here, find the distance, find the direction vector from A to B and D to C, giving your answer in terms of PI plus QJ plus RK. So we know how to do these by now. Um, A to B is B take away A, so you just go ahead and do the subtraction on those vectors there. And we've got to write it in a specific form that is specified in the question in the IJK notation, so minus I minus 2J plus 5K. And for the other one, D to C, well in this case we're doing C take away D, so in this case pull out your C and D vectors and do C take away D. In this case we get minus 2 minus 4J plus 5K. And I've immediately identified that this is parallel to this one here, so it may have something to do with the question. Part B show that the lines AB and DC are parallel and that AB is equal to 2 times DC. Um, I think the 2 there is in the wrong position. You need to times the other one by 2. I do apologise. Um, okay, so show that they are parallel. If we factorise out um, two, lots on the, um, 2 lots on the DC vector, we get the AB vector. So in this case here, DC is equal to 2 lots of AB. Therefore, the, 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 the vectors are going in the same direction. One is just going twice as far as the other one, so hence they're parallel. So you may need to write a sentence in something in regards to that. Hence, describe the quadrilateral A, B, C, D. Well, here's where we need to think about the properties of quadrilaterals. If we've got one vector and another vector that's twice as long as it, let's call this A, B, and this one here, C, D, and then we've got two vectors, I don't know what A and D, how they relate to each other, and B and C, how they relate to each other, but given that we've got two um, parallel lines, one that's a different length to another, this now obviously looks like a trapezium to me. So in this case here, we must be a trapezium. Okay, next question then. P, Q, R are the points 4, minus 9, minus 3, Q is 7, minus 7, minus 7, and R is... 8 minus 2, 0. Respectively, show that points, find the point S such that P, Q, R, and S form a parallelogram. Well, what I'd do is I'd probably draw myself out a diagram to help visualize this question. P here, Q here, R here, and S here. Try, when you label your diagram, try to go round in a circle, either clockwise or anticlockwise, it doesn't matter too much, um, but don't skip. Um, and just read it like a letter, effectively. You have to read it around clockwise. So what we effectively need to find out, maybe, um, let's see how they're doing the question here, is how to get from Q to R, and that must be the same vector for how to get from P to S. So work out how to get from Q to R first. The way we do this is we do R minus Q. So in this case here, it's going to be this vector minus this vector, so 1, 5, 7. And in this case here, we're going to need to start at P and go down by that same vector of 1, 5, 7. Okay, the reason being is that in a parallelogram, we have two parallel sides. So not only do these sides from here to here have to be parallel, they also have to be the same length. And if they're parallel, they must travel in the same direction, so hence same direction vector. And same um, distance means same magnitude, so in fact it must be exactly the same vector. That's because this question is a parallelogram. So in this question here now, what we need to do is we need to add 157 onto the vector P. So 4 minus 9 minus 3, add 157. <clears throat> gives you 4 minus 4, 4. So that is a coordinate um, that will make this shape here a parallelogram. Okay, let's have a look at equating both sides of an equation using vectors. Now, find the values of P, Q, and R. 
Well, what we're effectively going to do here is make three equations that make sure that the i's balance up on the left and the right, the j's balance up on the left and the right, and that the k's balance out on the left and the right. And we should get three equations, three simultaneous equations. Let's go ahead and solve them. So let's look at the i components first. We know that 3i must equal p i. So therefore, p must equal 3. Let's have, a look. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the j component now. So on the left, we get p plus 2. And on the right, we have minus q. Well, we know that p is 3, so let's just go ahead and use that. So 5 equals minus q. <clears throat> so therefore, q must equal minus 5. Let's go ahead now and look at the k component. So in this case, we get 120 equals 4pqr. Let's substitute in our values for p and q, cancelling out the k's on both sides. So in this case here, we're going to get 120 equals minus 60r. Divide by minus 60, and you get r is 2. OK, so this question was as simple as making sure that your i's on the left must equal your i's on the right. And the same for the j's and the k's on the left and the right as well. OK, we're moving on to these types of visualisation questions here now. So um, we have a diagram here. We have vectors starting at O. O to A is A. O to C is C. O to B is B. Prove that the diagonals OE and G, BG bisect each other. So let's just visualize that on the diagram first. B to G will be written as this diagonal line here. And um, O to E will be this diagonal from there to there. And what does it mean to bisect, an ang uh, bisect a line? It means that these two lines here must be split in half. Um, the point in the middle here, let's call it H. Um, o to H is going to be half the distance as O to E. So that's what we need to show. Now what we're going to do, and the strategy that we're going to use, and the one I'd like you to follow, is that we need to find two different ways to get from O to H. So two different ways to get from this coordinate here to this coordinate here. Now I think it's probably, the, and hopefully, going along the lines um, in red that we've dotted here. OK, so one of these should move along the line from O to E, and one of these should move along the lines from B to G. OK, so O to E, uh, if we go round the houses, we need to go along A, uh, along a B to D, and then up a C to C. And B to G is going to go back along a B, up an A, and up a C. So it's minus B plus A plus C. So the way that you go from one direction vector to another direction vector is by adding them together. Now, the vector O to H will be the vector O to E times some scalar multiple. And we're hoping at the end of the question that this scalar multiple will come out to be a half, because therefore it bisects. So what we're going to say is that O to H, so this vector from here to here, is some fraction of the total vector from O to E. Okay, we're going to start off by writing that mathematical statement. The O to H is some fraction, lambda here is a fraction, of the distance from O to E. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to use A, B, and C, A plus B plus C, the direction vector from how to get from O to E, on the right hand side. So it's going to be lambda times a plus b plus c. So that's what o to h is. And we can expand the brackets as well. So o to h is some fraction of the vector a, add some fraction of the vector b, add some fraction of the vector c. Let's now have a look at going along the line from b to g. But remember, we need to start at O. So how do we get from O to H in a different way? A different way to get from O to H is to go to B first and then go some different fraction along the line from B to G. 
So we start by going from O to B, and then from B up to H. Now in both of the cases beforehand, and in this uh, example here, we've gone from O to H. We're using effectively the same vector from O to H. And in this case here, the O to H vector is to go along B first, so that's why B is at the front here, and then add some fraction, this time we're going to give it a mu symbol, of the vector from B to G. That was minus B, add A, add, G, add C, but only some fraction of that. So it's effectively just going to be, <clears throat> and expanding the brackets now, we're going to get B minus mu B, some fraction of B, plus some fraction of A, plus some fraction of C. And what is a good idea to do as well is to group together your A's, B's and C's, mostly just the B's together, 1 minus mu. Now, what we've got here are two answers, or two different ways of getting from O to H. And if we've got two different ways of getting from O to H, these two ways must be equivalent to each other. So what we can say, therefore, is that this thing here is equal to this thing here. And now we'll just compare the left and the right hand side. So we can see that those two have been set equal to each other. Have a look at what goes in front of the a's on both sides of the equation. It must be the case that lambda is equal to mu, or in other words, the fraction on the left hand side must equal the fraction on the right hand side. Let's have a look at the coefficients of b now. b is a little bit more tricky. A lambda b equals 1 minus mu times b. So lambda here, the fraction on the left hand side, is the same as 1 minus the fraction on the right hand side. And now we've effectively got simultaneous equations just to solve. We know that mu is equal to lambda from this equation here, so substitute it in. Uh, add it to the other side and divide by 2 and we get lambda equals 0.5. And it must be the case that mu is 0.5 as well. So how does this prove that OE bisects BG? Well, because the fraction from O to E is a half, and the fraction from B to G, when we go to H, is a half as well, therefore, the two vectors, um, the two... Um, distances are half of the original diagonals. So in this case here, we're clearly seeing that this, sh this shows that OH has been bisected, split into two equal parts, both of half the size of the original quantity. Okay, and this works for BG as well. Okay then, so this question beforehand here, there are a few exercises on this in exercise 12c. I really do suggest you have a go at this because it's, um, it's quite tricky and it does require a lot of algebra and a lot of structure in your algebra. Feel free to rewind this part of the video and go back and answer a few questions using the structure of how we've done the question here. Um, but beforehand, uh, to look at some of the questions we did in the middle of this video, pause the video and try this question out here. Okay then, let's have a go at this question here then. To show that a triangle is isosceles, it must be the case that two of the lengths are equal to each other. So the length, so the vector from A to B is going to be B take away A, which is equal to 4, 4, 3, minus 2, 1, 5. And this is equal to 2, 3, minus 2. And the modulus of A, B, is equal to, let's just do it on the calculator, it's going to be 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared, all square rooted, and in this case here we get square root of 17. For a to c, it's, uh, how do we work out this vector? It's c take away a, so it's going to be 2, 7, 5 minus the vector for a, which is 2, 1, 5, so in this case here, we're going to get 0, 8, 0. And now this direction vector is definitely going to be 8. Don't need to do many maths on that. Uh, and then we need from B to C, and hopefully it will match up with one 
for these lengths we've already got. So C, whoops, B, there's a B there. Uh, C is 275 minus 443, four, uh, which is going to equal minus 232. Two. Oh, it looks like it's the top one. I'm pretty sure that it's the top one there. It's got the same numbers in it. It's the square root of 17. So because A to B is equal to B to C, the magnitude of both of those, our isosceles triangle looks a little bit like this. Um, A to C is going to be on the bottom. That's the distance 8, and then it's square root of 17 here. I've kind of done the scale on this wrong, because I know that 8 is way bigger than the square root of 17, but hey, I'm just showing you what the diagrams are roughly look like. Uh, find the area of the triangle. Well, I know that um, one way of doing this is to bisect the isosceles triangle into two, uh, so my, uh, and then find the perpendicular height. So in this case here, to find the h value, I'm going to do the square root of 17 squared minus minus um, 4 squared, uh, and then square root answer. And I'm pretty sure here that we'll just get 1. Inside the brackets, we're going to get 17 minus 16 which is just 1, square root of 1 is 1, so effectively the height on our triangle here is going to be 1. So in fact a better diagram is going to look something like this. A, C, B, 8 on the base, square root 17, square root 17, and uh, we get a height of 1. So now working out the area, I'm going to get 8 space times height divided by 2, we get 4 units squared. Okay. Uh, part C is find a point D such that ABC is a parallelogram. Okay, so let's draw out what this would look like as a parallelogram. So I'm going to put point... Um, we've got two isosceles points here, so uh, this distance here is going to be equal to this distance here, so we'll make it uh, all the distances equal. So we're going to have um, A here, B here, and C here. Distance on this is 17, distance on this is 17, uh, and this point here is going to be D. So what we need to know is how to get from B to C, and then we're going to do exactly that same length to get exactly the same vector for get to get from A to D. Now, to get from A to D, therefore, I need to do coordinate A, so I'm just going to write A, plus the vector from B to C. Now, in fact, this is just D, isn't it? Um, so to get to coordinate D, I need to do position A, add the vector from B to C. I think I've worked out the vector from B to C in my question earlier. So D is going to be at the position of 215, that's my coordinate for A, plus the direction vector from B to C, that's minus 2, 3, 2. And in this case here, we add the 2 together and we get 0, 4, and 7. Okay. So that is the position coordinate of D, 0, 4, 7. Now if you've done this question here and you've got a different answer, that doesn't necessarily mean you're wrong actually. There are multiple different coordinates for D that we could have picked. So have a look at the answers for question 2 in exercise 12c to see if your answer was correct as well. Okay, thanks very much for watching this video. As I said, have lots of practice on this exercise here, particularly the geom geometry-based ones, the um, vectors-type ones like this one here. Um, and yeah, they, they do require a lot of work and, and, and working through it methodically and, and setting out a lot of algebraic structure to it, but it's good for you, okay? It's good for the soul. Okay, thanks very much for watching.